88.1 CKDU. Gentlemen, introduce yourselves to the peoples out there. Who the hell are you? I am Hardigan. Speak right into that mic, sir. I'm Hardigan. There you are. He's hard to turn it up a little. Wait, he's like, who are you again? I'm hard again. H A R T I G A N. Oh, hard again. Yeah, I don't Looking have. Looking fresh a, over there, sir. I, I cut my left ear off. Gave it to my girlfriend. Can I ask you a question about your hair? Yeah. Listen. Um, She's rocking do you the see? It? Yeah. That is it's very new. popular not, right now. I just put it on last night. How do you feel about? That uh, style right last, now. Everybody's kind of doing it. How do you feel about it? Last night there was a party at my place and I had my, my toque on the whole night because I was scared to show people my new haircut. But I got around to I it and I wore it out right the whole night. What the, how do I'm you feel? feeling very self-conscious yeah, right now. Yeah, because you I have like three on your, on your beard. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. weird. I know for yeah. people that can't see this right now, I like basically it. it's three giant yeah. braids. You'll, you'll, you know, you'll see pictures. It sort of looks like a dude that you would see in the Star Wars cantina. You know nice. I mean? You'd be in the corner drinking the blue drink or whatever. I like <laughs> this. Know, you know what I mean? But it's the unique beer. I feel yeah. like he would be near right like now. a futuristic kind of like beat machine. He's near that with the blue drink. He's got. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because he's got the. It, the people can't see this, but he's he's Wait, rocking he the samurai. Yeah. But he doesn't have the mullet cape in the back. That the like when you see a lot of the dudes with the samurai now, they get the ponytail thing, but they have the hair that hangs down in the back. But he has he's more of the streamlined samurai with, with Yeah, that and I don't have the samurai sword and I don't have the skills. <laughs> oh, no. Don't the tell the people. Or, or don't tell any, the people that. He also has no honor whatsoever. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This gentleman here is commenting heavily on Harding and hasn't even introduced himself. Who are you, sir? Oh, this Let is, the people know. This is Seth. This is Seth the blabbermouth, I guess. <laughs> I want to know what the Roman numeral usage is behind 13. your name. That is a whole show's worth of information. Really? Yeah, the thing about Seth is he can't talk without rhyming. He goes, Seth the blabbermouth, I guess. Everything has to rhyme. No, not, yeah, no now you, don't, you shouldn't have said that because now people are going to be analyzing every sentence to see if it <laughs> yeah. matches up. Anyway. Me too. I read that. I was like, wait, did that just match up? No, so no. 13, let me ask you a quick question about 13. 13 is a good number to you or a bad number? It's a good number Excellent. to me. Excellent. Okay, we can, well, move, well, we can move on. It's bad. It was, bad. It was bad that became good. Bad that became good. That, I'll leave it at that. It was a bad Are thing you a that big became... Batman fan? Oh, yeah, yeah. Does that influence some of you? Like, I feel like Batman was at a crossroads. He could have been bad. Batman, it's funny. Or maybe he People is are... bad. Doesn't he kind of enforce you really the status know what quo? The, what the Batman thing really is is that when I was real young, I had a real close friend die. Mm -hmm. And it was traumatic as hell to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of became an introvert. And it, I was really aware of, of adult problems at a very young age. So I wasn't like a regular kid anymore. And one of the few things that got me comfort was my babysitters. Like I always thought Batman was the coolest. But I got this long box after Billy died. And uh, it had Batman stories in there. And when I'm reading, I can't, as a young kid, I remember thinking, well, shoot. It, <laughs> Trying to watch the swearing, so I apologize. <laughs> well played, sir. But I just remember thinking, like, it could be worse if my parents could be gone. So, like, Batman is just one of those things that sort of reminds me that things could always be worse. Bad turn good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Batman was highly influential, I think, in a lot of people. My brother has, like, this obsession with Batman. You know, I think you guys might be similar age, and I think there's something about it. It's just... It's, it's uh, I don't know. Crystallized man. in people's heads as, like, a, a hero. Uh, to me, well, yeah, I guess that's it, but it's, it's uh... That's, I guess... Yeah, that's it, but it represents, again, thinking. I mean, things should always be better. I could be a billionaire, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like he had it totally bad when his parents yeah, died. I mean, his parents died, true. but he had billions to kind of help. But I'm just saying that it just helped put things in perspective at that age. And then as things went on in my life, as other bad things started happening, it's just sort of something that always stuck with me. That sort right. of gave me comfort in a weird so way, I guess. So he, he was always famous because he was, like, born famous almost because his parents were really rich? Yeah, I wasn't really famous. It wasn't but like because like, you know back then, in the Batman origin, like you weren't just a celebrity for being rich. Like today, Paris no, Hilton no, level no, celebrities yeah. didn't exist, so you weren't a socialite. Wasn't going to be in the papers. Well, as a he kid was like a that. he was like a truly rich person. Like I think that we we see we don't we still don't see them today because the people that are rich that we see all the time. They're out making money. Like, we're seeing them because they're getting appearance money. Yeah. They need that money. Yeah. So they're kind of groveling on that to stay rich. Yeah. But the super rich are posted up somewhere that yeah, we no, don't absolutely. know about. Absolutely. Doing something we don't know about, probably. Absolutely. You know what I mean? They're still, they're, they're they're still the ones, like, Bruce Wayne in it. They're the where, ones owning the club that's paying for this sure. appearance yeah. by that. And sure. I think what, makes, what yeah. makes the Batman story really appealing is, is, the, is the fact that he had so much money, but he also did good. Because there's so many people in power right now that don't do good for the world. And I also spent a lot of time by myself. And he seemed to spend yeah. a lot of time. Like, as I'm reading the comics, right, I'm like, man, he spent a lot of time by himself. And that was right. sort of me, too. So, so when, during this time alone, 
did you start to did rap start to be rap music was, was it coinciding with that or did rap we, music was what I met rap music and Batman almost at the same age when I my very first day of school at Humber Park Elementary I uh, I remember going up to the doors I was there with my sister and uh, a, a older like a friend of ours that's her age she too she's two years older than me and uh, there were some guys just popping and locking and beatboxing and sort of just messing around outside and I was just like what is that and yeah. I remember calling this dude, was just like, oh, that's rap music. And I was mesmerized. <laughs> and especially like being a kid and seeing the beatboxing at the time. When you're a kid, you're constantly making noise anyway. Yeah. So beatboxing was very appealing. So I just told my parents I like rap music. And they, you know, started buying me some rap music. DJ Jazzy Jeff in the front. Like, you know, kid-friendly rap music before it got... Definitely. I know exactly what you're talking about.